New Japan's Strong Style Evolved show happening in the United States. Preview here on the channel. As it is going to be on uh, live on Access TV at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. As the... It won't be on New Japan World till afterwards for VOD for United States members and stuff like that. But uh, for non-US people, it will be live on New Japan World. As uh, the card, 9-match card, a whole lot of tag matches. That is to be expected here. But the opener, 6-man tag, uh, Rapungi 3K, the, the full Rapungi 3K tag team of Sho and Yo and Rock and Romero taking on SoCal Uncensored. Hell yeah, Scorpio Sky, Frankie Gazarian, and Christopher Daniels. That is a chance being really awesome. That's going to be a fun opener. A lot of cool shit. Very, it's going to be very much like the Ring of Honor opener of the uh, 16th anniversary show that had uh, the SoCal Uncensored and uh, what, what was it? It was the Guns and somebody else? I think that that sounds about right, but that was that was a fun opening tag. That'll be the same thing here uh, on uh, that opener. That's gonna be a great way to open up the show. As uh, then we have the second match, tag team match: Dave Finley Jr. and Juice Robinson taking on at Ghetto and Hiroki Goto, a uh, Lion Mark versus Chaos tag match. Uh, the story with Juice beating uh, Hiroki Goto during the New Japan Cup, uh, like non. Uh, like one of those tag matches type of on uh, one of the shows matches and now that's going to be building up to him having a never open weight title match I'm assuming at Sakura Genesis it hasn't been announced yet to my knowledge but uh, that's going to be a uh, interesting tag match you know honestly if you're at the show that could be a bathroom break match to be honest that's probably the, the least this is going to be the least talk about tag match, in my opinion. That's just me. But uh, then we have the next tag team matchup. Chucky T and Toriano, the comedy com <laughs> the comedy tag team gods, if you will, taking on the Killer Elite Squad and Dave Boy Smith Jr. Lance Archer. Boy, that's going to be something. That's, <laughs> that's going to be... Whew, oh, boy. As uh, It would be great to see a lot of comedy spots and then Lance Archer and David Boy just probably going to kill him. That's... Probably my guess on how that's going to go. Uh, the next tag match, Bullet Club is Fine match. And it's going to be called the Grills of Destiny taking on Cody and Marty Skrull. With the uh, Bullet Club being over as fuck in the United States. I'm sure the crowd's going to be all over that one. Should be interesting to see how that one plays out. As uh, the uh, eight-man tag match for the next match. Dragon Lee, Raisuke Taguchi, Kushida, and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Taking on L.I.G. with Hiromu Takahashi, Bushi, Sonata, and Tetsuya Naito. No evil, of course, since he is injured. Uh, anytime Dragon Lee or Hiromu Takahashi are in the same uh, ring, that's uh, that's must-see. That's definitely a treat for people going to the show. As uh, predictions goes, you know, really up for grabs. So many different uh, variables. There's really... Nobody has a championship, so I guess who, whatever they want to build towards at Sakura Genesis, to be honest. If they're wanting to build towards a Bushi Kushida or a Bushi Raisuke Taguchi or a Naito Tanahashi, but I feel like the card doesn't really need that, to be honest. But who, who knows? They really can go uh, wherever they're uh, feeling for Sakura Genesis. As then the uh, sixth match here, the uh, the replacement match. What would have been Jushin Thunder Liger and Rey Mysterio Jr. is now Jushin Thunder Liger versus Will Ospreay. Oh, it's, you know, it's so funny. Will Ospreay is, you know, in the prime of his career, has uh, been killing it, but I'm a little less excited to see this now. The Rey Mysterio Jr. and Jushin Thunder Liger match, just as far as, like, a build and just kind of like it's the rematch from Stark A96, it's very near and dear to my heart. It has something that happened damn near 22 years ago, happening again. Uh, just, I don't know, there, there was something about that I really enjoyed, and now it's just kind of like, eh. You know, if you're there alive, you can see Liger, so that's cool. But, uh, as far as, like, the landscape of New Japan, I mean, it's probably going to be a, a nothing, nothing match. Uh, you know, Osprey's probably going to win. Would be something. Liger wins, because then Liger would have, like, a junior heavyweight title match against Sakura Genesis. That'd be something. But, uh, yeah, just, uh... 
yeah, Will's gonna win. That's just probably gonna be nothing. But, you know, if you're there for the show, uh, most of these matches, you could say, yeah, there's filler tag matches. But if you're there live, you're not gonna feel like it's a filler tag. You're, just, you're gonna be watching New Japan in front of your own eyes. The, you know, one of the few times New Japan's been over here for the United States for shows. So it's, you know, it's a special time. But for people watching on Access or, you know, looking to tune in the show... There'll probably be a lot of skippable stuff. Like, uh, you know, the David Finley Jr. Juice Robinson tag match against Ghetto and Herb Goda. That really doesn't impress me too much. But, uh, yeah, in the, the Chucky T. Toriano tag match against Davy Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Arch Killer Squad, that has a chance of being really bad. As, you know, really just however you're, you're one to feel for it. You know, it's a, it is a nine match card. It's pretty, it's a huge card for, uh, just a basically a U.S. special show. There's that. Uh, but now we're going into the real the meat and potatoes here of this card, the uh, the tag team match here. That really, if they play their cards right, this could be talked about as the best tag match on the show. To be honest, the uh, Tomohiro Ishi Kazuchika Okada versus Zack Saber Jr. and Minoru Suzuki Suzuki Gun versus Chaos Tag Team. Man, this is. When you, I could even tell who's the worst guy in this tag match. You know that you have a really good fucking tag match here. This is, I mean, that's huge. My predictions, I think Ishii's gonna pin or cement Monoru Suzuki just to set up for the Intercontinental Championship matchup at Sakura Genesis, just for something. Cause Zack and Okada's already set in stone. You really don't need. Do they think Zack could beat Okada? I mean, that'd be huge. He's already off a wave of momentum here. But I just feel like, oh, you, let's have Ishii Suzuki, because he doesn't have a match yet, to my knowledge, Suzuki for the Intercontinental title, but you know, that's just that's just me. And uh, then to the co-main events, the United States Championship matchup, Jay White versus Hangman Page, that has a chance of being really good. Uh, the card, you know, there, there's gonna be, depending on how that tag match goes, with Ishii, Okada versus Saber and Suzuki, that has a chance... To be, uh, this has a chance to be really forgettable, to be honest, depending on how that goes. So, they got, they're gonna have to set the bar, because they're not, everyone's gonna be talking about either the tag match before them, or the tag match after them. So, it's really, it's up to those guys to really set the tone and try to be on that same level as that, but it's gonna be really hard. It's gonna be really hard. I do think Jay White's gonna win. I don't think he's gonna drop the belt to Hangman Page, though. That would be, I would be all about it, to be honest, uh, for Hangman to get a win. That'd be kind of cool. As I'm a fan of Hangman Page, so that's probably why. But as far as, you know, Jay White, he just won it. He just beat Omega, so it'd be weird to have him be a transitional champion when he uh, pretty much just uh, came back post-excursion a uh, very short time ago. Really doesn't make sense. I I'd say Jay White's going to get the win there. And then the main event, the big dream tag match, if you will, Gold Lovers, Young Bucks, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. I think everybody knows that. As, uh, you know, it, it's funny. When that was announced for this card, obviously the, uh, the tickets have already been sold out when that show was, when this match was announced for the show. I know a lot of people were kind of like, well, is, isn't that kind of dumb? Like, you, wouldn't you promote that to a, a card that hasn't been sold out yet? And that does make sense from a business perspective, but really, New Japan, of course they're going to sell out here in the United States. They sold out last year, so it makes sense they're going to sell out this year. And they Sure, they went a little bit bigger, but they should have went even way bigger, especially with this match on the card. In, in my opinion, you know, I feel like, I don't know how big off the top of my head this arena is, I feel like they could at least sell out a 10,000-seat arena, in my opinion. Or at least come close. They'd at least sell at least 8,000 tickets. Because, you know, they'll have your United States people buying tickets, your United States fans, but you also have a couple of Japanese fans who are really huge on New Japan and have the money and can afford a trip to uh, California to go here to watch New Japan. Uh, you also have, you know, Canada and people from Mexico who maybe love New Japan and could come up to the uh, New Japan show. So there's really there's a, a lot of demographics and a lot of different variations for selling out that big of a, an arena. Uh, especially, I mean, New Japan's on fire right now. But, as uh, so, you know, because the thing about this card, it was sold out, you know, obviously, like, right when the tickets were on sale. And then, 
uh, this card, you know, really, this was a three-match card for the longest time until uh, Wednesday, the 22nd here of March. And then that's when the rest of the uh, card was announced. And I know some people who bought tickets I've, I've talked to, and they're like, I, I kind of wish there was more... There was a, another championship match, but I'm like, listen, dude, you have a big opportunity. There's not a whole lot of times that you get to see New Japan live. You know, you got to take that into consideration. Plus, you have an absolute dream match in the main event, and also that tag match with Ishii and Okada, Zack Sabre Jr., Minoru Suzuki, that's going to be a great match, even if they kind of just kind of kind of go half ass to be honest, just kind of letting it go, letting it be slow and, and a steady pace, not really doing a whole lot. That still has a chance being special. As uh, Is it something to where if you look at a full card of other shows, you'd be like, well, it's not really a complete card. In, in my humble opinion, I, I think this has a chance. Is it going to be talked about a lot? You know, the matches like one through six? Not really, no, they're going to be forgettable, but everyone's going to be talking about 7 and 9, you know, maybe 8, depending on how that goes, but really, it's all about the main event. It, gone, I think, are the days where wrestling promotions put on uh, one-card shows. I think nowadays, with the how people book things, you know, they love a full-match card. You know, there's, man, there's cards uh, going on during WrestleMania weekend, where they feel like more of a complete card than this one, to be honest. Uh, you know, the, the Joey Janelle Spring Break show, for instance, that feels more like an actual show in something that's like, oh, you know, it, it feels more like a wrestling show and not... But that's just the way New Japan does. There's a lot of filler tag matches, and that's... They do tours, and that's... It builds up to future matches. So with this, people were more expecting... Uh, we're expecting more meaningful matches but really you just had the new japan cup earlier in the month and now you have sakura genesis in a week's time you know on the first so really this show was placed in really a bad spot for uh anything meaningful to happen but you still get uh some big time matches i will definitely be interested you know there's times i'm like well i could watch the opener and then kind of see in the background what's going on until this, the big 7th, 8th, and ninth match cards happen. But you know, I, I just feel like it's kind of cheating the system. You know, let's just kind of watch the full show and see how it plays out, to be honest. As, uh, as far as predictions for the Ibushi Omega, the Golden Lovers Young Bucks match, I do think the Golden Lovers are going to win, to go back onto that point before I... In this video, just want to go in a little sidebar there, but I, I, you know, Golden Lovers, they're gonna that match is gonna be nuclear as far as the reaction of the crowd and the reaction from the the, the, the Twitter verse and all that shit. Everyone's gonna be loving this match. So there's really, I mean, they could just go out there and do nothing, and people still like this was fantastic. You know, it's one of those things where it's been such. Built, it's been built up so well, and it's gonna be a highly anticipated match. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great stuff. As uh, I'll say, Abushi's gonna pin one of the Bucks because Omega. I think there'll be a spot where Omega will be like kind of hesitant against the Bucks at first, and the Bucks kind of fire him up, get him going after a while. Then they like you know do the Golden Trigger or something onto one of them, beat him. That would be crazy though. The Young Bucks beat. Uh, the Golden Lovers, you know, they pinning Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, two big major single stars of New Japan. That would be huge for them. As uh, that will do it for the preview. And I will catch you guys next time for the review of the Strong Style of All Show. Take care.